Hi, this is Jason Molesky. In this example, we'll take a look at performing a significance test for an experiment. Now, high levels of cholesterol in the blood are associated with higher risk of heart attacks. Will using a drug to lower blood cholesterol reduce heart attacks? The Helsinki Heart Study recruited middle-aged men with high cholesterol but no history of other serious medical problems to investigate that question. The volunteer subjects were randomly assigned uh, to one of two treatments. In the first group, 2,051 men took the drug gemfibrozil to reduce their cholesterol levels, while in the second group, a control group, 2,030 men took a placebo. During the next five years, 56 men in the gemfibrozil group and 84 men in the placebo group had heart attacks. We want to know if that difference is statistically significant at the alpha equals 0.01 level. Let's start by stating our problem. We hope to show that gemfibrozil reduces heart attacks, so we actually have a one-sided alternative. We'd like to show that the proportion of individuals who have heart attacks in the group taking the drug is less than the proportion of uh, individuals in the placebo group who would have heart attacks. We can write these hypotheses two different ways. We can write them either as statements uh, with the differences in proportions, or we can do a more straightforward approach just comparing the proportions. In either case, our null hypothesis is a statement of equality. Either the difference between proportions will be zero, or we can write it as P1 equals P2. For the alternative, it's one-sided, so we want to show that the difference will be less than zero, or that one proportion is less than two, uh, the other proportion. In this case, we'll define P1 to be the actual heart attack rate for middle-aged men like the ones in the study who take the drug gemfibrozil where P2 is the actual heart attack rate for middle-aged men, like the ones in the study who take only a placebo. So because of the way we've defined them, we want to show that P1 is less than P2, or the difference P1 minus P2 is less than 0. And again, we'll use alpha equals 0 0.01. Now if the conditions are met, we'll perform a two-sample z-test for P1 minus P2. Well, we were told the data come from two groups in a randomized experiment, so the random condition is met. The number of successes, in this case a success is actually defined as individuals having a heart attack, uh, and the number of failures in the two groups are all greater than 10, so the large counts condition is met. With those conditions met, we can perform our calculations. The proportions of men who had heart attacks in each group can be calculated. Uh, for the gemfibrozil group, P hat 1 is 56 individuals who had heart attacks out of 2051 for a sample proportion of 0 0.0273. And in the placebo group, 84 individuals out of the 2030 had heart attacks for a sample proportion of 0 0.0414. Now our pooled proportion of heart attacks can be found by taking the count of heart attacks in both samples combined divided by the count of subjects in both samples combined. In this case, a total of 140 individuals had heart attacks out of the total of 4,081 that were sampled, or uh, in the actual experiment, I should say. That's a pooled proportion of 0 0.0343. For our test statistic, we use our test statistic formula. We observed a difference between our sample proportions. We use our pooled proportion and our standard error calculation. And inserting all of the appropriate information and performing the calculation, we get a z-score of negative 2.47. Now using table A or normal CDF, the desired p-value in this case will be 0.0068. Now because our p-value is less than 0 0.01, the results are statistically significant at the 0 0.01 level. We can reject the null hypothesis. In context, we have convincing evidence of a lower heart attack rate for middle-aged men like these who take gemfibrozil than for those who take only a placebo. For some additional practice in performing a significance test in an experiment, try exercise 21.